Hi there, and welcome to another pencast for the course Reasoning and Logic. In this one, we're going to take a look at how we can create truth tables. So you should by now have some idea of what truth tables are, right? For a certain pro, uh, formula, they show all the possible different values that they can have depending on the input values. So let's take a look at a formula. Let's take a look at P and Q or P. For this formula, we have two propositional variables that occur in it. We have P and we have Q. So the first thing we do in our table is we write down all the possible values that P and Q can have. Now, P and Q are both propositions, meaning they are either true or false, no other option. So that means we have two options for Q and we have two options for P, two times two, that's four options in total. Now, the way we typically write these down is as if we were counting in binary. You will learn more about this in the course of computer organization. But for now, the way to think about it is like this. We order the letters alphabetically, so P first and then Q. And then starting from the right, we alternate every one time, or then we alternate every two times. If there were to be another letter here, then we would alternate every four times, every eight times, and so on and so forth. But again, in computer organization, you will learn about why this order makes sense. Now then, these are the different values that our input variables can take, our input propositions. And now what we want our truth table to show is the value of our pool proposition. And there's different ways in which you can denote this. The first option that I want to talk about is the one that I will probably most commonly use in the lectures. Although I find that I switch a little bit between the two as well. For this first method, what we do is beneath every iteration or every uh, repeat of one of our input formula, uh, input uh, variables, we start by writing down its value. So P is 0, 0, 1, 1, Q, 0, 1, 0, 1, and P again, 0, 0, 1, 1. And now we take a look at each of the operators in turn, starting with the AND here, and we start with the AND between, because it's between the parentheses, P and Q, 0 and 0, 0, 0 and 1 is 0, 1 and 0 is 0, and 1 and 1 is 1. Now that we've done this, we can take a look at the OR. The OR is between this column and this column, 0 or 0 is 0, 0, 0 or 1 is 1, 1 or 1 is also 1. Now, in order to help the reader, or in the case of an exam, in order to help the grader, it helps a lot if you can clearly indicate which column contains your final answer. After all, you've now just produced a grid of 20 numbers. It helps us a lot if we know what to look for. So what you can do is you can either circle the column and then indicate that it is your final answer. Or if you brought a highlighter, then feel free to also just, oh, the highlighter in this is not quite what I was expecting. There we go. Uh, feel free to highlight the column that is the final answer, or you can just put an arrow next to it and say final answer. Some way to indicate clearly this is the thing I want you to look at. Now, this is one way to do it. The other way to do it starts the same. So we have our input, P and Q, with oh, the four different options. Um, but now we split our formula up. So the first thing we do is we say, okay, this P and Q, let's take a look at that thing first. So P and Q, that was 0, 0, 0, 1. And now let's call this A. And then what we're going to look at next is A or P. Well, A is this, P is this, so now we're comparing this column with this column. 0 or 0 is 0, 0 or 0 is 0, 1 or 0 is 1, and 1 or 1 is 1. And there we go. So our resulting table is a little bit smaller, and still it is very much appreciated and strongly recommended to write down what your final answer is.
If we have to guess, we're horrible at guessing, we might guess wrong. So make sure to always indicate that. Now, I can already hear some of you saying, do I really have to write down all these steps in between? And my answer is no, you don't have to. If you want to leave out this step, or if you want to leave out all of this and only write down your final answer, that's fine. I won't stop you. But if you make a mistake, ah, then I don't know where the mistake happened. All I can conclude is that your final answer is wrong. Whereas here, I might be able to see, ah, oh, the mistake actually happened here. So the end operator, okay, that one's problematic, but the or, that one, they do know how it works. That way I can maybe still give you partial points. So write down more stuff and mistakes will have less of an impact. Write down only the final answer and do it correctly, you still get full marks. So it's up to you. How confident are you in your answer? I always recommend writing down the steps in between. You're doing them anyway. Writing them down takes you a little bit more time, but shouldn't be too bad. Now, if you think you've understood, great. You can end the video here. See you around. But if you want one more example, stick around for one more minute. We'll do one more together. So let me see here. I should be able to move this somehow. Yes, there we go. And we'll do one more quick example. Uh, let's make it slightly more interesting. Uh, P and not Q. Or R. Or uh, well, let's make it not R or P. Something like this. Why not? Yeah, this will work. And we'll negate this whole thing too. So again, option one. Start by ordering your letters alphabetically. On the right, we iterate or we alternate every time. Then we alternate every two times. And then we alternate every four times. These are the eight options we've got. Now, with eight options, if you don't have grid paper, what I do recommend is adding a dotted line here to help the reader along. Uh, especially for me and my handwriting is horrible, you will find that I otherwise get my rows a bit confused. Um, so this can help to, to remedy that. If you have grid-based paper or line-based paper, this isn't an issue, of course. Now, for option one, uh, we write down the whole thing again. P, oh, not or, but and, not Q, or, not R, or P. All right, the values for P, or zeros, Four ones. The value for Q, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. Value for R alternates every time. And for P alternates every four times. And now we start with the innermost operators. That's this negation and this negation. So not Q becomes this. Not R becomes this this second innermost is this and and this or so for the and we're looking at these two columns 0 0 0 0 0 1 1 0 0 uh, this or we're looking at this one and this one there we go uh, next up is this and uh, this negation and it's the negation of this column so it's one 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 zero zero one one and finally the or we're looking at this column and this column et voila turns out that our proposition was a tautology and if you don't yet know what that means you will find out soon enough clearly indicating our final answer as this column if you want, you can also box it to really make it clear. This is the thing we should be looking at. And option two. Uh, in option two, what we do is we start off the same, P, Q, and R. But now we split it up 
so the first thing we do is we take for example p and not q p and not q okay uh zero 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 p and not q so one one zero zero and we say well we call this a uh what we actually need is the negation of a so not a is one 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 zero zero one one we also need not r or p and this is where it my writing will soon disappear behind the webcam so let me quickly move this up a bit uh not r or p so not r or p okay so the bottom half is going to be ones and not r so this we'll call that b and our final step is then not a or b meaning we need these two columns uh, and it's an or and i've done this twice now and in both cases it is a tautology so i'm fairly confident that i've done it correctly let me move the whiteboard a little bit more there we go again indicating this is the column that contains my final answer and there we go so this is how you make truth tables for slightly bigger propositions than just p and q if you have uh, if you want to practice with this there's plenty of opportunity in the course to do so both in the homework and outside of it and i hope to see you around for the next video bye for now